Welcome back. In this section, we would want to introduce you quickly to the world of microservices. We'll talk about what is a microservice. We'll talk about what are the challenges with a microservice architecture. And we'll talk about the advantages with microservices. Let's start with understanding what is a microservice. This, there is no one accepted definition of a microservice. So, Definitions vary from a smaller one like this, which says it's a small autonomous services that work together to very long definitions. This is the definition which was given by Martin Fowler and James Lewis. I mean, this is like a 10 line definition on its own. It says it's a style to develop a single application as a suit of small services, each running its own process communicating with very lightweight mechanisms, things like HTTP. And these services are built around business capabilities, independently deployable by automated deployment. And there is a set of centralized management for these services. These services might be written using different programming languages and maybe using variety of data storage technologies. The definitions I'm showing you here are just a couple from a lot of other definitions which are present for microservices. So I don't really want to get into the world of what is a microservice and what is not a microservice and how to define it and all that kind of stuff. Let's get started with a few things which I really consider are important for a microservice. For me, microservices are basically services which are exposed by REST. In addition to that, you have small deployable units with very well thought out boundaries. Small, well chosen deployable units and these should be cloud enabled. So for me, the important parts are REST, having small deployable units which can be cloud enabled. Now, what do I mean by this? What do I mean by cloud enabled? How does it look? For me, when you build microservices, this is how it would look. Instead of building one big monolith, you'd be building a set of smaller microservices. I'm showing five in the picture. It might be 10, 15, 20, 100, or 1000. So it's a set of microservices with well-defined boundaries, which are interacting with each other. and these are cloud enabled. That means I would be able to have multiple instances for each of these microservices. For example, we are looking at the diagram of a production deployment for a set of microservices. You can see that at, that, at this moment, there are two instances of microservice one, four instances of microservice two, and one instance of microservice three. By cloud enabled, I mean that if there is more load on microservice 3, I should be able to easily bring up another instance of microservice 3. This should not involve a lot of configuration. I should be able to bring up an instance of microservice 3 or take down an instance of microservice 2 without having huge problems. That is what I mean by cloud enabled. In this step, we kind of gave you a high level thousand feet picture of what we think about microservices. Welcome back. In this video, we would be discussing about some of the advantages of microservice architectures. The most important advantage of the microservice architecture is that it enables you to adapt new technology and processes very easily. When we build applications as a combination of microservices which can communicate with each other using simple messages. Each of these microservices can be built in different technologies. In typical monolith applications, we would not have that flexibility. For example, microservice 1 might be Java, microservice 2 might be Node.js, microservice 3 might be written in Kotlin, and Tomorrow, there might be a language XYZ, which is really doing well and which provides a lot of benefits to you. And you can easily create a microservice in that specific language. 
and also for the new microservices that we create we can bring in new processes as well the other important advantage of microservices is dynamic scaling consider an online shopping application like amazon they don't really have the same amount of load or same amount of traffic or same amount of users throughout the year especially during the holiday season the load on the applications will be lot and during the rest of the year there might not be so much load during the black friday there might be a huge amount of load if your microservices are cloud enabled they can scale dynamically and you can procure hardware and release it dynamically as well so you can scale up your applications and scale them down based on the load because you are developing smaller components it's much easier to release microservices compared to monolith applications this means that you can bring new features faster to market and that's a big advantage to have in the modern world in this video we discussed about three of the most important advantages of microservices adoption of new technology and processes dynamic scaling and faster release cycles until the next video bye bye welcome back in the previous two videos we talked about what is a microservice and what are the advantages of microservices the thing is microservices do not come for free there are a lot of challenges which are associated with microservices and docker plays a crucial role in solving a number of those challenges let's get a 10000 feet overview of the challenges and how docker helps in solving the challenges associated with microservices earlier we talked about the fact that instead of building one large monolith we will build a number of small microservices so you might have 10 microservices 100 microservices or 1000 microservices we said each of these microservices can be built with different technologies and also because these microservices are small the number of deployments increase exponentially if you are doing 10 deployments in your monolith architecture you might be doing 100 or 1000 deployments in your microservices architecture now the question is how does docker help with these challenges now let's start thinking from the perspective of development one of the most important things about microservices architecture is we say it makes adopting new technology faster how does docker make adopting new technology faster now let's think you are building microservices 1 using java microservice 2 using python microservice 3 using node if you did not have docker you'll have different deployment procedure for your java application for your python application and your node application and that's not good because there is docker you don't really need to worry about how to deploy a microservice all that you need to build is a image once you have the image whether it's a java image whether it's a python image whether it's a node image it does not really matter the way you deploy it is the same and because of it adopting new technology becomes faster you don't really need to worry about deployment procedures you build a image which is consistent with your organization policies and that's it you don't really need to worry about how to deploy it because there are standard procedures that can be implemented on how to deploy and scale it the other important thing from the perspective of development is there would be fewer environment issues if you use docker in your local if you use docker in qa dev production all your environments are consistent the way you develop it in the local is the way you deploy it in production and therefore you will not have any more problems like it works in my local if it works in your local there is a high chance that it will work in an environment as well because the way you are running it in local is the same as the way you are running it in production now let's take the perspective of your operations team as far as the operations team is concerned they don't really need to worry about what's inside the docker image as long as the docker image is good 
and it's able to run an application, you can take it and deploy it wherever you would want to. So you have consistent deployment automation across different environments and different technologies. Since your deployment procedures don't really change when a technology changes or when you have a different environment to be created, it makes operations very, very easy. Since all microservices, irrespective of the technology, are built as containers, you can have a lot of technology built around these containers. You can have standard procedures and technology for monitoring, for scaling, for deployment, and all that stuff. In summary, I would say that Docker provides a lot of flexibility for your microservices architecture. I might even go as far as saying Docker has played one of the crucial roles in the evolution of microservices architecture. As we are reaching towards the end of this course, we will take a couple of microservices and see how you can deploy them with Docker. I'll see you in the next step. Until then, bye-bye. 